Well, good morning, everyone. Thank you for being here. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Rebecca Key, KO4KVG, and I am the Communications Manager at ARDC. So I'm here this morning to give you an overview about who we are and what we do. So ARDC is a 501c3 nonprofit foundation based out of California, and each year we disperse funds in the forms of grants and scholarships. We also have developed and we maintain the 44 net, which is a block of IPv4 addresses that are allocated for amateur radio experimentation. So just a brief overview of our mission. We aim to promote, enhance, and support amateur radio and digital communication science and technology. We as staff, contractors, and volunteers, we aim to uphold a set of values that I have listed here, all the way from curiosity to generosity and gratitude. And you can find more information about our values at ARDC.net forward slash about forward slash values. So to give you a little bit of background, um, ARDC, our roots go all the way back to 1981, where Hank Magnuski acquired the IPv4 addresses for amateur radio experimentation. And 30 years later, in 2011, ARDC was formed, um, founded by Brian Cantor, to be the trustee of the 44 net addresses. In 2019, we sold 25% of these IPv4 addresses, and after that we created the endowment to fund our grants program as well as our operations. 2019 also brought on the untimely passing of our founder, Brian Cantor. And then a year later in 2020, we began building a staff to manage our operations, which include our grants program and our technology. So we have six people on staff full time. You've already met me. I'm Rebecca, communications manager. Our executive director is Rosie Schechter. John Kemper is our director of technology. Chelsea Paraga is our grants manager, and John Hayes is our outreach manager. He couldn't be with us today, but he will be in Orlando for Hamcation. And then our operations manager is Meredith Stroh. We also have a part-time grants associate. She just started this past Monday, and her name is Shasta Griffin. So just a summary of our resources. We have 12 million IPv4 addresses that we again, allocate for ham radio experimentation. And we have an endowment that funds grants, and we have them in three different categories, growth and advancement of amateur radio, education and scholarships, and research and development. So now that I've given you an overview, let's dive into our grants program. So these numbers go to the end of 2022. 2023 um, are in progress and they will be reported in our annual report and our financials that will be available on our website. But um, for the end of 2022, we have made a total of 101 grants with a total distribution of about $8 million, directly impacting about 14,000 people. And if we break this down by dollars, um, we, just, we break it down from amateur radio projects, education, scholarship and research and development, we had about an even split by dollars in funding the education and research and development projects. And I will note with research and development, this is a, a two-fold increase from 2021, so we have seen some growth in that area. If we break it down by the number of projects, in 2022 we funded 47 amateur radio projects. That was our um, your biggest chunk there. That's going to be more your club grants, building repeaters, repairing repeaters, getting equipment for a club ham shack, uh, upgrading things like that. Your education is gonna be more your education and training programs, some K through 12 programs like a Yoda camp, for example, would be an education um, grant. Research and development is gonna be more of developing new technology or building on current technology. 
And the scholarships are pretty self-explanatory. They are funds for students to go to college or return to college. So this here on the left is an overview of the impact we've had with our grants. Um, green countries are going to be the ones that had the most significant impact. And I'm going to point out here in Georgia, come see me. I am next to the Parks on the Air booth to talk more about grants. But with our international reach, so in 2022, by dollars, about 13% of our projects um, were international based that totaled 13 projects. And we're, of course, looking to grow that number in the years to come. So over all time, and by all time, through the end of 2022, we have made 187 grants, distributing about $20.9 million, directly impacting more than 71,000 people. Of course, that number is, these numbers are rising. So if you're interested in applying for a grant, you can apply for a grant at any time. Of course, the sooner the better. We have four dates where we do reviews. That's going to be the 1st of February, April, July, and September. Um, a note about our scholarships, we evaluate those at the end of the year so we can compare um, the grants proposals to each other. So for more information on applying for a grant, you want to go to ardc.net forward slash apply. That gives you a lot of information about our grants program, how to apply, I got a grant, now what do I do? And there's also a list of all of our um, grants that we have made since the inception of the program. And for applying for a grant, you want to go to grants.ardc.net, and that's where you can get an account and submit your proposals. Just an overview of our requirements and eligibility, there we go. Um, we make grants to nonprofit organizations that fall under this criteria here. You must be a 501c3 nonprofit public charity or the international equivalent. Um, nonprofit educational institutions fall under our eligibility, and this can be US and international. Government projects that do align with our mission. And if you're a group or individual that has a physical sponsor that falls under these eligibility requirements, you are eligible for a grant. And again, there's some more detailed information on our website for this if you um, have some other questions. In an overview of the process, of course, you want to prepare your proposal. You want a solid um, presentation of your description, the goals of your project, an outline, as well as your budget. And then you submit it on the grants.ardc.net um, website. And from there, your application will undergo review. So um, staff members will do an eligibility check. From there, those um, proposals go to the Grants Advisory Committee, or our GAC, and they review those applications. And then from there, the GAC makes recommendations to the Board of Directors, and the Board of Directors make the final decisions on which grants get funded. Just some important things to note. After the application deadlines, it can take from 60 to 120 days to um, have a funding decision. If you're an international grant, of course, that could take longer. And if we need more information from you, we will be reaching out. So if you're interested in applying for a grant, come talk to us. Um, we have a booth here at TechFest next to Georgia Parks on the Air. And I'm here to answer any questions you may have. Or I can also put you in touch with some of my colleagues that can give you some more specifics. And as always, we have an email address, giving at ardc.net, that you are um, more than welcome to send an email to. So that's kind of an overview, um, or a little more details of our grants program. We're going to switch gears just a little bit to talk more about another thing we do at ARDC, and that is managing the 44 net. So when we have the question of what is 44 net, or you may know it as AmperNet, um, we do have some common misconceptions. Um, it is not a Facebook for hams. It is not an automated defense network run by Cyberdyne Systems. It is not an auto patch network in the UK. So obviously, it is something else. And what is that something else? I'll just give you a few definitions here. Um, AmperNet is amateur packet radio network. 
And this again is the block of about 12 million IPv4 addresses allocated for licensed amateur radio operators. Again, these are free to use and are for non-commercial use. And we at AERDC own the IPs and we also coordinate the addresses and other related matters. We refer to, as, we refer to the evolution of 44Net as an open access community for amateur radio operators, among many others, to democratize telecommunication technology. And we are evolving beyond you know, just IP addresses and IP IP mesh tunnels to include global points of presence. So just an overview of some use cases for 44Net. We, um, HamNet is one of them. This is the largest user of 44Net. It is an high-speed intranet in Germany and some nearby countries. You can use 44Net for IRLP, emergency communications, repeater infrastructure, web SDR, and hosting services such as email. A specific use case, this is the Grabondi Tower in the Netherlands. The tower hosts 2 meter, 70 meter, as well as digital and analog equipment that does utilize 44Net. And specifically, they use HamNet to set up IP cameras. So we have a technical advisory committee at ARDC, and this is a group of volunteers that work on 44Net-based policies and projects. One of the advances that they have worked on is developing the 44Net VPN router. And with this, you can take a router, off-the-shelf router out of the box with a VPN protocol. You can request a 44Net VPN tunnel and then use that to connect with the POP server, and that way you can bring 44Net to remote locations. Some of our initiatives for 2024, uh, we want to expand our 44Net portal, have further development of our 44Net POP infrastructure for additional use cases, and also to create a community technical knowledge base. So if you want to have more information, so you can visit our website at ARDC.net. You can sign up for our monthly newsletter that goes out. Um, we have a presence on Groups.io. We've got several different subgroups that are related to you know, grantees, 44Net. Um, definitely recommend you checking that out. We also have a 44Net mailing list. We are looking for community volunteers to serve as beta testers for some of our um, projects. We have community meetings twice a year online. And our next one will be in February, so stay tuned to our website and our social media pages for a date and time on that, so that's coming around the corner. Um, you can reach out to us at any time at contact at ARDC.net. And if you're interested in learning more about 44Net, um, the portal is where you go to um, request the IP addresses. And we also have a wiki page that can give you more detailed information on the 44Net they're in, and we've got a link tree QR code here, and I also have it at my booth. So thank you so much for attending, and I'm happy to answer any questions you might have. Yes. So what's the total endowment? Um, we have our financials on our website that we post, and you can find some information there and also on our Frequently Asked Questions page. Yes, sir. So I don't have a lot of information on that. I've, I've been here since June. Um, I can put you in contact with our technical director if you want to know a little bit more about how the tower was set up and how they're utilizing HamNet. I'm happy to do that for you. Yeah, I would encourage you to join our groups IO. We've got some 44 net based subgroups and you can start a conversation and you know, meet some other folks that are interested in 44 net and some networking. Yes, sir.
Okay, so your question is, you know, is there a range of funding? So you can apply for a grant as little or as large. You know, of course, you know, you want to have a clearly defined you know, project and goals, but there's no, um, okay, your club is this size, you can only ask for this much money. And there are also, if you go to our website, we've got some grant application instructions and advice with a little more specifics if you want to learn a little more about that, and I can also put you in touch with some of my colleagues. Okay, so you're... Okay, so you're asking if um, a club would need to s uh, set up a 501c3 to fund the project of interest? Well, as far as that goes, I can put you in touch with our outreach manager, but we do have, um, there are some groups that have physical sponsors that are nonprofits and fall into that category. Um, we have several examples of that on our website. Um, but yeah, there's if you have a fiscal sponsor that's a nonprofit, um, as far as setting up an, a 501c3 for the purposes of forming a grant, I would defer you to our outreach manager, John Hayes, and I've got his card if you would like to talk to him more about that. <laughs> for sure. <laughs> so you're asking if our scholarship program is ARDC or is it with another entity or an organization. So um, I'll say firstly, um, we do not have a partnership with ARRL, it's a collaboration. Um, we, with our scholarship program, we do fund organizations such as ARRL, and we also fund um, the Society of Women Engineers is another program that we do fund for scholarships. Um, Washington Women in Need is another one. Um, so we. We fund, you know, educational-based groups as well as organization, uh, you know, ham radio-based clubs and organizations. If that is helpful. <laughs> they are in they are in scholarships. Yes. Yeah, so if it's a scholarship. Yeah, you know, like we, we fund the ARRL scholarship program. That's going to be in the scholarship section. Our scholarship that funds the Society of Women Engineers, that's also in that scholarship category. All right, you're welcome. He's coming up. <laughs> All right, so I've looked at the um, how to apply for uh, a grant for our ARIES group, and it almost sounds like you can't do emergency communications. It's strictly clubs and um, other things. Um, how do you carefully word something? Because what I would, what I'm wanting to do, is fund a Wi-Fi network for linking repeaters. Uh, it could be used for WinLink. Um, one of the main goals is uh, Aries, but the other half of it is it's a club project to link repeaters and get um, data traffic from one part of the county to the next. How do you go about that? All right, that would be a fantastic question for John Hayes. Um, he can tell you a lot more about kind of the ins and outs of um, the application process. Um, I've got his card, and you've also got his email as well. So that'd be a fantastic question to follow up with him about. Thank you much. Anybody else? Don't let me hog the microphone. I think we're done. All right. Your booth is where again? 
It is next to Georgia Parks on the Air, and I'll be here until 3.15. Thank you. 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 Thank you.